Welcome to the Soft Life with Sadi Baddies. Sadi Baddies is the antidote to mental health stigma, and this podcast is hosted by yours truly, Priscilla O. Adjman. We are a virtual sanctuary centering Black and multiracial people, and we prioritize the mental and emotional nourishment that is the foundation of collective healing in our communities. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to the Soft Life Baddies. Welcome back to a brand new week, a brand new episode. In case you missed it, last week we talked about dealing with a growth mindset or developing a growth mindset and challenging your limiting beliefs. And this episode hit home for so many of you. We had a lot of feedback about how this episode really helped to shape some of the ways that we talk to ourselves on a regular basis and being self-aware of that type of self-talk, whether you are someone that tends to beat yourself up or you just put a lot of pressure on yourself to be a certain way. This is a great episode, especially for recovering perfectionists, because a lot of those limiting beliefs were limiting beliefs that I had myself for a very long time. So this is very personal to me, and I hope that it helped you as much as reframing some of those limiting beliefs have helped me in the future. So today we are talking about creating a morning and night routine that actually sticks. And there could not be a more perfect time to talk about creating a new morning and night routine, namely because the first day of autumn is actually on Saturday. Saturday, September 23rd. And with a new season and with the end of the year quickly approaching, a lot of us are maybe a little bit nervous about doing a deep reset. And I talk about the importance of doing a reset all the time. I talk about how doing resets uh, help me to realign not only my personal goals and my, you know, my personal journey that I'm forever on, it also allows me to have moments of gratitude and and reflection, which is so necessary for us to not only stay motivated, but for us to take a step back and realize how far we've come. So this episode is all about creating a morning and night routine that will actually stick with you. And if you are someone who is not a morning person, I know a lot of us struggle with having morning routines and night ru- night routines. Some of us are like nocturnal. We <laughs> stay up all night and then we, you know, finally get our day started at like 12 or 1 p.m. after we've slept in because we didn't go to bed till 3 a.m. So if you're in that area of wanting to kind of reset some of those habits, this episode is for you. I think a lot of us are bombarded with self-care and productivity advice all over the internet. Somebody's creating some new method, some new trend to help you to be the best version of yourself and get more done. And I just want to remind you that creating a morning and night routine is not about getting things done. It is about feeling in alignment with your mind, your body, and the purpose that you have on a day-to-day basis. So Having a morning and night routine will just allow you to have a skeleton or I would say a framework of what steps you can include in your day to help you feel not only accomplished because, you know, we all love that boost of serotonin, but more so so that you find a rhythm to depend on so that you're not dealing with analysis paralysis or decision fatigue all the time when it comes to what am I going to do today? How am I going to get things done? The reason why I started doing a morning and night routine, I didn't even realize that I was creating one until I realized, oh, wow, I've been doing consistent steps for, you know, several months or to a year. And it started to really make me feel more at ease. I'm somebody who used to really struggle very, very, very heavily with anxiety. I used to struggle very heavily with panic attacks. And the the people who are closest to me, I mean, truly the people who are like my day ones, my family and, and my friends, they know how much I struggled with anxiety. And a lot of times it was because I was overwhelmed and I was putting too much pressure on myself to do a bunch of tasks in one day. And because I, you know, was on this journey of being a recovering perfectionist, I started 
really putting a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect and have a perfect morning routine. And, you know, I would even timestamp my morning routine, which to be honest with you, once I got rid of that, it changed the game for me. I found a morning routine that actually helped me to get into my natural flow. I found a morning routine that's flexible enough for me to swap things out as I go. During the seasons, my morning and night routines look a little bit different as well. So I'll get into all of that. But if you overall are someone who wants to be more organized with your time management and you don't know where to start or you're somebody who tends to start and stop habits, but they don't stick over time because they're just not working for you. This episode is for you and it could not be a better time again to get started and start to incorporate some of these practices and in, into your self-care routine because we are at the end of summer. Summer's over. You know, it's winding down in a couple of days. And this is a perfect time to really evaluate how the right you want the rest of your year to go. So what are some of the benefits of having a morning and a night routine? Because we are going to talk about both. So number one, as I mentioned, having a morning and night routine or a routine in general allows you to have a lot of relief from decision fatigue and analysis paralysis. In the first episode of this season five, we talked about analysis paralysis and how feeling stuck can make us waste a lot of time. It can make us feel like we're not doing enough. It can also really put a damper on our creativity. So having a morning and night routine, because it's you're, you're essentially giving your body and your mind, you're giving yourself a system to rely on, it helps to relieve that okay, what do I do next? How do I do this? And, you know, that decision fatigue of what if I'm not making the right choice if you're bombarded with too many choices? So I cannot emphasize how much this has helped me with getting rid of some of that analysis paralysis first thing in the morning. And another benefit of having a morning or night routine is productivity. Of course, that is not the sole purpose, but studies have shown that having a structured morning routine can help you start your day with more purpose and focus and accomplish more things throughout the day, if that is your goal. And one of my favorite parts of having a morning and night routine is the overall stress reduction. So I say this all the time. When you wake up first thing in the morning and go straight to work, you are centering work in your life. If you wake up and the first thing you do is is check your Slack or check your email or hop on a call or hop in a meeting or do whatever. And the first thing you do is do is that you are centering work in your life. And as we know, living in the society that we live in, centering work, any type of work in your life, especially if that is the first thing you do when you wake up, that is almost a surefire way to start your day stressfully. Why? Because To be honest, work can be very stressful. You're dealing with, you know, clients, you're dealing with different projects or tasks, or maybe you're a student and the first thing you do is just go to class. You're dealing with, you know, professors and timelines and deadlines and essays and assignments. And that is a lot on your brain first thing in the morning. So having a morning and night routine has allowed me to reduce stress a lot because I'm starting my day with ease. I'm starting my day with softness. I'm gradually easing myself into the day, doing little mini steps that bring me joy actually helps to reduce that anxiety and stress of being, you know, waking up first thing in the morning and and not knowing how the day is going to go. Because when you create a system, you create a routine, you have something to fall back on. And overall, it just creates a positive tone for the rest of the day. And remember that preparation is an investment on your peace. When you are prepared for something, you are investing in your peace long term. So there is never, it's never a bad idea to take time out for yourself every morning, no matter how busy your day is, even if it's five minutes, or if your morning routine looks like 15 minutes compared to someone's two hours, that's okay, because you are making it work for you. And one One more, you know, thing that I want to share about this specific point is that when I was working at a job that I really, really had a hard time showing up for, I mean, quite honestly, I just, I hated the job. I really struggled to 
find fulfillment there. I, you know, it was a toxic work environment. Y'all know, y'all already get the, you know, we've talked about this already, but what I want to just emphasize is that when I started creating a morning routine, baby, there was no, there. I didn't even care. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to work and my manager's tripping. That's fine. That's unhurt. Guess what? I already had my tea. I meditated. I did my skincare. I did a little workout. I'm good. So it sets a positive tone for the rest of your day that you can always go back on and be happy that I'm grateful that you did something for yourself, despite whatever, whatever the unpredictable nature of your day might bring. Um, of course, having a, a, a routine also provides a great way to have time management and to practice time management. And it can just allow you overall to manage your time more efficiently and effectively. And it also just makes it easier to accomplish those goals and tasks. Once you've already kind of started your day with that dopamine hit of, of you know, doing things that you love that make you feel good, doing things at work don't feel as dreadful because you have already set set the tone of your day with a reward system. And I love that about creating a morning and night routine. One of the most important and significant aspects of having a morning night and night routine, especially as we're getting into the colder months, if you're living in an area that's coastal like New York, where I am, or you're living in the Northeast or other parts of the countries, the Midwest even, you know that when it gets cold, a lot of us really start to isolate and retrieve and come back into our homes. And we sometimes can be very susceptible to seasonal depression as well, because if we are not creating systems that allow us to feel good and that allow us to feel well and be balanced and at ease with ourselves it's very difficult to go through a whole winter without having anything to look forward to and so these little routines might sound very simple and maybe even so simple that they sound unnecessary but trust me when I tell you that creating a routine benefits your mental health more than you know And again, like I said, studies show that not only does creating routines, morning routines help with productivity, it also with people that do um, are diagnosed with depression, it shows that they create little um, moments of reward with them having something to look forward to every day from creating their own routine. So yes, your routine is, is to me, I live with having routines in my life, it really helps me to not just be, yes, productive, but also it helps me to have something to look forward to the next day. So what types of routines might you need? So let's break down some of the types of routines for the different type of person you might be when creating a routine. So first we have someone who is a parent or a caregiver. Maybe you have a little one you have a baby or you're taking care of a loved one, you're taking care of your parents, a sibling or someone else who needs your care, your routine might look a little bit different than someone who, you know, for example, is self-employed and has a little bit more time in the morning. Your routine might also look different if you're a young adult, say you're 25, 26, 30, 32, however old you are or however young you are, I should say. If you are, you know, just working and you have, you know, your social life and you have your friend group and maybe you have a hobby or business on the side, your routine might look very different too. Also, if you're someone who works in person or you go to an office versus someone who works from home, your morning routine will also look different. I can tell you that when I started working from home last year, fully working remote, like having a completely remote job. I saw such a big shift in my morning routine. It was like night and day. My morning routine prior to, you know, having a, a fully remote role was very, it, it was still sufficient, but it felt a little bit more rushed. And I think that's where I was trying to do like this time stamping stuff. And it just, it was getting a little too overwhelming. So I, was, I, I, I simplified it and it really started to stick with me. But When I did have to go to work and even travel for work on a regular basis, my routines looked very, very different and they were definitely more simplified. But at the end of the day, they still gave me exactly what I needed. I needed to have a soft place to land in the morning 
when I woke up. And that's exactly what my routines provided me with. And of course, if you're a student, if you're in college, if you're working or you're in grad school or whatever you are in your life, if you are a student, your routines are also going to look a little bit different too because you're prioritizing your classwork, you're prioritizing hobbies or activities that you have to do or even work if you are working and you're in school, right? So just remembering that your routine needs to be something that is catered and designed specifically to you. Think about what your lifestyle is. And then from there, you can start to design what your routine is going to look like. Okay, so I want to walk you through what my morning and night routine looks like right now as a 30 year old woman that lives in New York City with her fiance. I do not have any children. Um, I do have a business and I do work full time as well. So this is what my morning routine looks like. So first thing I do when I wake up, I do a few minutes of breath work. And this really helps me to ground myself into my surrounding. This also helps me to not be on my phone first thing in the morning. I used to have a rule, which I try to still incorporate. But to be honest with you, I haven't been incorporating it as much lately, but I did live by this rule and it really transformed my morning. And that was no phones until I finished the first part of my morning routine. So that means anywhere from at an hour to two hours of not being on my phone, not texting, not calling anyone, not going on social media, not scrolling on TikTok, nothing. So I would literally just, if my phone went off because I had the alarm on, that was it. I would just leave it in my room or wherever and just go about the rest of my morning routine. So breath work is really an amazing practice and tool that can help you to be present, but also really resets your parasympathetic nervous system and allows you to be in the rest and digest phase of your breathing versus the fight or flight where you're stimulated and you're ready to go. This really helps you to just ease into the day. So I do a little bit of breath work. Sometimes it's, um, you know, a guided meditation as well. I, I have a guided meditation playlist that I love, which I will also share in link below. And that really just sets the tone for me having a good day. And I'll do this anywhere between five to 10 minutes a day. Then I will tidy up. So, um, you know, my partner and I take turns, but we will, you know, typically take turns on making the bed, etc. But if I'm tidying up, I'll tight I'll pick up, you know, if there's like clothes on the on the floor or whatever, just making sure that my environment is like clear. And I am a firm believer of just having a clear space first thing in the morning really helps me to drop into the day. I always, always, always light incense every single morning without fail. Every morning I light some incense and this allows me to have a moment of stillness and gratitude for the day. I used to do it just kind of like I wanted my room to smell good, but now I use it as a mindful moment and I allow myself to just take a moment and be grateful. Like, you know, thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. Thank you for this beautiful day. I'll open the window. I will just let some fresh air in. But the incense is a must. And um, my favorite incense scent. I actually have a lot that I I use. My friend Jess, if you're listening, hey girl, hey. Um, when she went to Thailand last earlier this year, she brought me back some amazing incense from Thailand, and it smells divine. I sadly finished using that a few weeks ago, but I did grab some new incense, and my favorite scent is Nag Champa, and um, I love it. It's just it radiates this beautiful fragrance throughout my entire home then this is the this is the next thing that is so important is putting on some music you know shaking shaking your hips a little bit rolling your body around just getting some movement in your body and dancing is like honestly the cheat code to having a good day and I saw this tweet that said Something like a lot of y'all just are not having a good day because when you wake up, you don't wake up and turn your swag on like you don't hop about the bed and turn your swag on. Honestly, I feel that because when you wake up and you just decide I'm going to put some music on and have a little dance, like just vibe and you don't even have to dance, but just like putting on music that you love 
is just such a vibe. It creates this little ritual. And I've been doing that for years. And every time I do that, I'm just like, yes, like I feel alive. I feel great. And it really helps me to just like put shift my perspective from being like, oh, I have to wake up. I have all this stuff to do to just being present and enjoying that five, 10 minutes in the morning. And I have a whole morning playlist. We have a uh, a great playlist called vitamin D, which is literally just like good, feel good music. Um, I'll link that below as well, but it's such a great way to start your day. Then I'll move towards doing some care, some body care, um, skincare, oral care. So I do do some oil pulling, which is an Ayurvedic practice. Um, people have been doing for centuries and, um, I'll do some oil pulling for however long. Typically, I will oil pull from like anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. And if you don't know what oil pulling is, just check it out on YouTube or TikTok. I'm sure there's millions of videos about it. Um, but it is an ancient practice. Um, it's an Ayurvedic practice for centuries. And I've been seeing the benefits of it for about a year now. So I'll do some oil pulling and, you know, brush my teeth and, you know, just do all of those like hygiene stuff. And um, then I will rinse my face with a cold washcloth. I'll just take a clean washcloth and put some cold water on it. And then I put some SPF on because every morning, unless it's raining and pouring outside or it's really nasty out, I will try my best to get some some sunlight in and literally just go on a walk. So I'll put some SPF on and um, I will go outside and just take a nice little walk for like 20, 30 minutes. I'll put on a podcast. A lot of times I'm listening to this podcast because, you know, sometimes you got to make notes for yourself. And if I'm not listening to this podcast, I'm listening to some of my favorite my other favorite podcasts like For the Healthy Hoes or Balanced Black Girl or uh, The Gray Area with Sean Illing, The Huberman Lab, Hindsight, um, so many. I listen to a lot of different podcasts and I listen to a range of of uh, genres. I don't only listen to self-help or wellness podcasts because I like to expand my palate in true Sagittarius fashion. Then I like to come in, come back inside and do my at-home workout. I do work out at home. So I'll do either a, a cycling um, class on my stationary bike, or I'll do an at-home workout, like a strength training um, with weights. I've been exploring some weightlifting and I really love it. I must say it took me a minute to get used to it, but weightlifting is so good for your vitality overall. And I love it. And then I'll, you know, obviously shower, you know, freshen up, do my skincare again, and then go into my work day. But before I do that, I like to always make myself a cup of tea, either some um, lemon balm tea or peppermint or ashwagandha tea. And that is pretty much my morning routine summed up. And, you know, throughout the day, like I'm working, I'm doing multiple things, but I just try to take mini breaks when I can, you know, whether it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes here, if I do have a chance to just get some fresh air, love that. Or if it's again, another, like, let me put some music on, let me put some lo-fi music on or whatever it is, just that I'm just so that I'm constantly in a state of, of presence and being present in the moment that really has helped me to set up my days for what I would consider success. Of course, there's things that happen that are out of my control. Shit happens all the time. There's things that I cannot, I do not have any control over. But again, coming back to this routine has really helped me to feel grounded. Now, my night routine is very similar. However, my night routine doesn't necessarily start with breath work and meditation. It, it typically ends with that. So that's the last thing I do. But at night, what I like to do is, you know, uh, what's called what's it called like a night shift and that's kind of when you just put things away so that in the morning there's not like a huge mess in the morning so I'll do you know that like night shift like if there's something that's on the couch that needs to be folded like a blanket put that back if dishes are out put the dishes away etc just making sure that your home is like tidy up to your standards I am a bit of a neat freak 
So, I mean, my standards are, <laughs> they're kind of up there when it comes to what I consider neat and clean and tidy. I can't help it. I'm African and a lot of us are just like this. But um, yeah, that's pretty much how I start that evening routine. I always like to put my candles on. Again, the incense, there's always incense burning at some point in the day if I'm home. And so I put on more incense and then um, I will shower again because I am a sh- double shower gal. Um, my nighttime shower is a little bit more slow. I get to take my time. And one thing I really love to do in the shower is release all the tension, all the stress, all the worries of the day and kind of do a visualization exercise as I'm imagining that going down the drain. And I started doing this a couple years ago and it really has helped me to feel like the day is done. Like, you know, when you just feel like you have the day from yesterday's lingering on you a little bit, you know, maybe you got into an argument, maybe you just had a stressful day. I started doing this as a practice to end my days. And I literally feel like it creates a deep reset every single time I do it. So I do that in the shower, do my skincare again, and then I'll make another cup of tea. But this time I'll make some nighttime tea. Um, You can get this at any grocery store or anywhere. But I have been trying something new, which you might have seen on TikTok, which is this Sleepy Girl mocktail, which consists of tart cherry juice, which is supposed to have natural, um, which is said to have natural melatonin and um, help you to guide into an easier and deeper rest. And so I've been trying that with uh, just some seltzer water, some lime or lemon and some mint. And I do have some magnesium powder. So I'll like add a little bit of that in there. And I will say I've been doing this for a few weeks now and I have noticed a bit of a difference. I do think I'm more like my body feels more relaxed because sometimes or I should say my mind feels more relaxed because there are times where my body feels a little bit too active still, or my body could even be tired, but my mind is still active. So this does help me to kind of calm down before bed. And um, one thing that I used to do often was do like a yoga, like a bedtime yoga or stretching before bed. That's also a really good way to get your body to relax. Maybe if you've been working at your desk all day, you can get kind of all those little kinks out of your your neck or your shoulders or your back or wherever you hold tension. It's a good time to be present and focused. It could be five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes, however long works for you. That's also a really good way. If you have a pet, maybe this is a you know the time that you go walk your pet um or you know take care of other things in the home or the house and so whatever that is for you you know it, as it applies do that but for me i just tried to do some type of like tension release before i go to bed and then what i really love to do and i posted this on my story yesterday i got a lot of replies about how peaceful it seemed and it looked very peaceful because it truly is is i put on sound bowls i put on a video on youtube um i i mean it's a channel actually but it's literally just sound baths of you know high vibrational frequencies that can help you to guide you to go to sleep if i'm having a night where i'm like tossing and turning i will put this on and i'll knock out in five minutes like a baby I swear it is so 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 relaxing and it's just also just creates a really really calm vibe and creates ambient music for you if you're someone that does feel overstimulated often or just needs a kind of that brown noise or white noise to help you to relax this is a great way to do that so I will also share that um sound bath channel that I will share in the show notes for you and that's typically my night and morning routine so I have found that doing this has allowed me to have something to look forward to but also less decision making I don't have to think oh what am I going to do before bed I already know what I'm going to do for before bed what am I going to do when I wake up I already know what I'm going to do before I wake up so it's like I have I have less thinking and decision making to make by creating this formula Now, there are four pillars of what I would consider uh, self-care or routine. And this is something that we've talked about at our workshop, actually, with Google. 
a couple weeks ago. And some of those pillars include movement or stillness, depending on the day or night, but movement and stillness, nourishment, connection, and your environment. So I just shared with you a very thorough breakdown of my morning and night routine. And each of the things that I do in that morning and night routine do fall under one of these pillars. So for the first one, the movement and stillness, we have working out. We have, um, you know, in the stillness factor, it would be meditation or doing a gratitude practice like journaling or saying even praying that could be part of your movement and stillness. Um, having a guided, a gratitude practice could also be part of your connection, which I'll get into later. Um, nourishment, which could be, you know, taking your supplements or your vitamins. If you take that, uh, drinking water, making your breakfast, being outside, showering your body, nourishment, meaning nourishing yourself, your body, and being present with yourself and practicing, you know, your hygiene practices, that's nourishment to yourself. And then we have connection. So connection with yourself, with God, with your source or your higher power, with your loved ones, your family. Maybe in this morning routine, you want to include some connection with your child if you, you know, if you are a parent or you want to make connection with your pet or you want to connect with someone that someone that you love. So maybe every morning you send your loved ones, a parent or a friend or whoever, a text or good morning text to let them know that you're thinking about them. Or if you live with somebody, a roommate, whoever, your partner, it could be your opportunity to connect with that person. But it could also just mean that you're connecting with yourself first and foremost. And so you can do this through multiple ways. You can do this through journaling, through having a reflection practice. I do this specifically when I go take my my morning walk, but just connection in general is one of those pillars. And then last but not least, of course, we have environment. So that's kind of like the other factors of, you know, your physical environment, tidying up your room, putting dishes away, picking up clothes, cleaning up your environment so that when you are ready to actually start your your day where you are working or if you are working full time even if you're not working maybe you're running errands maybe you're going to help a friend with something maybe you're volunteering whatever your day quote unquote looks like basically before you start that thing this is you tending to your environment so you know instead of maybe you have like a pile of things in your room that you it's just this mountain is growing Maybe you take five minutes to tidy up that pile and, you know, throughout the whole week, it does not have to be something that you spend 30 minutes on and take up your whole morning. It's really up to you, but making little progress with that goes a long way and also connects back to your reward system in your head, which makes you look forward to continuing that action. So another formula or another framework that can really help you to make this morning and night routine stick with you and for you is creating what's called a morning menu. This is essentially what we just shared in the four pillars of the morning routine and all the activities listed in, but this just goes by another name. You might have seen this around floating around on Pinterest or TikTok, but this is exactly ties into all of the elements of a morning and night routine and self-care habits that we shared, right? So first we have on your morning routine, I mean, your morning menu, what is a morning menu? So basically think of it as a menu, the same way you go to a restaurant and you have a menu and there's a bunch of different items. And typically if it's a, you know, regular restaurant, you're going to have more than one, more than one item for each section. So you're going to have a lot of varieties of drinks. You're going to have at least a few varieties of appetizers, entrees, desserts, etc., coffee. The same way you're going to do the same thing for your morning and night routine, or you're going to call it, in this case, a morning and night menu. So you're going to create a list of five things that you want to build a habit of, and it could be working out, it could be journaling, it could be whatever feels good to you. It could be dancing, it could be maybe you're a painter and you want to make some progress in the morning to paint before you go to work. It could be that. That could be, you know, one of your connection habits that you have. So whatever it is, make a list of at least five things to do each morning. This way you can swap it out. What you want to do then is build 
a deck of at least three of those things to do that morning. So out of the five things that you have, you're essentially picking only three of them. So instead of you feeling like, oh my God, I need to work out and then I need to take a hot girl walk and then I need to drink all this water and take my supplements and then I need to clean my room and do my skincare and journal and do a meditation and then I need to read 10 pages of a book and do this and that, like this, it's too much. It's too much. Trust me, I've tried it before and I failed miserably because it's too damn much to do in one day. Pick three out of those things and create a menu out of that, meaning that you can swap it out. If you don't want to do a walk today because it's raining, that's fine. You can do a workout at home. If you don't feel like working out today at all, cool. You'll move on to something else, right? So you're creating flexibility. You're creating flu- a fluid a fluid environment for you to thrive. And that's the whole point. We want to create a fluid environment for ourselves to thrive using these routines. Next, we have your um, night routine. Same thing. You're going to put five things down. Maybe you want to, you know, uh, try to make sure that your space is clean before you go to bed or you want to do some yoga or some stretching before bed or you want to have some cuddle or play time with your pet or you want to call a friend before bed. Whatever the case is, put those five things down again and then pick three out of those things. So you're creating a menu that you can rely on. You're creating reliability and trust within yourself that you can show up and do these things for yourself because they are habits that you want to create, but also habits that you like. The the most important aspect of creating a morning and night menu is that you are focusing on feeling good. You are not focusing on just getting things checked off, crossing off everything on your to-do list. The key here is flexibility. And it's not about being that girl because you already are that girl. You're not trying to chase some unrealistic standard of productivity because what you what is important is actually creating a lifestyle that's sustainable for you so that you can rely on this framework moving forward. So we want to create things that are tangible. We want to create actions that are accessible to us. We want to create habits that are going to stick and allow us to feel good without punishing ourselves. If we cannot, or if you feel bombarded with trying to do too much in one day, it's probably because you are trying to do too much in one day. So sticking to those three things that you can do for your morning routine is really going to allow you to have flexibility and it's going to allow you to be committed to practicing that. And you can also switch it out. You can be flexible. You don't have to do the same thing every day. If you get tired of it, if you get bored, if you get really busy, if life gets hectic, you can always switch out and do things that make you feel good and fit your lifestyle. So one another important aspect I think is really important to keep in mind is that you don't need to timestamp this morning routine. Unless you have a super rigid, strict schedule that you have to timestamp every single thing you do every single day, you don't have to timestamp. You don't have to start your day at 6.30 a.m. and then stop at 8 o'clock on the dot if that's not what works for you. And also just remember that having a window of time is a lot easier and allows a lot more flexibility and ease for you to have this be something that you rely on and something that actually sticks with you. So you don't need to timestamp this. These are just three things that you can always fall back on, even if you need to pivot and switch things up. And of course, listen to your body, listen to your body's needs. If you're someone that has to go to the doctor often, or you're someone that's a caregiver or you're your parent or which your student you live, you know, in an area where maybe you don't have a lot of space or green space to go take walks or whatever the case is, tailor this to your needs. Tailor this to your priorities in life. If your priority right now is not to be, you know, waking up early, then that's fine. Do you do what makes you feel better. But at the end of the day, Creating a morning and night routine is not going to work unless you are paying attention to your lifestyle and designing it around your lifestyle. If you only have 30 minutes to have a morning routine, then do something. Maybe instead of three of those things, maybe pick one or two of those things that you can do. But the whole point is to show up for yourself and carve out time for yourself every day because 
sometimes we forget that we don't, we are people, we have human needs, we have things that every single day we are dependent on. We are dependent on sunshine. We are dependent on fresh air. We are dependent on having nourishment. So when we start to neglect those things, a lot of times what happens, at least one thing that I've, I've learned over the years is that when I stop taking care of myself, or if I don't take care of myself, my body will decide when it needs to be taken care of. That's a lot of times when we see ourselves burn out. It is because, you know, obviously we live in a society that does not prioritize rest, that does not give us the opportunities and the space to rest and looks at rest as an as a reward rather than just our birthright, right? I also think that when we learn to reject that notion and prioritize our care and our well-being, we can show up better for each other. We can show up better for our communities, our loved ones, and ourselves. And we cannot pour from empty vessels if we're not being poured into and we don't take that time for ourselves to nurture ourselves and ease into our day and decenter work, which honestly, if you if you are in a place where you feel like your job or your work is does not allow any room for you to take care of yourself, like take a step back and think about what it is that you need in that moment, right? Like if you do need some time off, take a time, take a day to to do a deep, hard reset and come back to how you can nurture yourself in this moment. So let's recap quickly about how we can start incorporating our morning and night routines that make us work, that work for us. And the first thing is that making sure that you're doing something that you enjoy, something that you love, and you want to feel good about it. You don't want to feel like you have this laundry list of things to do and you're not getting any of it done. And of course, being flexible, being open-minded, trying new things. Maybe you're somebody that you're really avoidant to doing a specific type of workout or exercise or movement, but you are starting to be more open to it because you saw someone, you know, try it or a friend of yours told you about it. Just being open-minded in general is going to allow you to have more options that fit into your lifestyle. And of course, just listening to your body, your needs, and decentering work as being the first thing you do in the morning. And I think with these efforts, one thing that I know for sure is that they have helped me tremendously and they've helped a lot of people to feel more ease into their day and ease into what could otherwise be a very unpredictable day and it gives you something to look forward to which is always the goal and if you really want more tips and overall just support with your creating routines, creating a self-care map or creating a self-care, you know, just don't going deeper into your self-care journey. I encourage you to check out our self-care guide, which is available on our website, My Journey to Self-Love, which is the ultimate self-care guide by Sadie Baddies. And it is available on our website. A lot of you have already reached out and shared how much you love it. And we are so excited to see how this helps so many of you. So definitely check it out. We will have that on the show notes and I will see you next week. Stay soft. Introducing Saddy Baddy's very first product, My Journey to Self-Love, the ultimate self-care guide by Saddy Baddies. Your transformational self-care journey starts right here. We've created the ultimate self-care guide just for you with over 60 pages designed to help you discover wellness routines and practices that actually fit your fast-paced lifestyle. Designed to be completed within eight weeks, this self-care guide encourages you to take simple, practical steps through introspection and awareness to deepen your self-discovery and healing journey. To stay connected, join Sadie Baddies on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and more, and sign up for our monthly newsletter on SadieBaddies.com to stay in the loop. Sending you hella love and stay soft, baddie.